This is the third and the final program of our series on classic steelhead fishing. When you complete this mastery series, you'll know how to take steelhead anywhere. And you'll be ready to accept the challenge of the Skeena, the home of the largest steelhead in the world. Landing a fish like this can be the thrill of a lifetime. For any confirmed steelheader, this is a trophy steelhead. Only one angler in 500 catches a steelhead that weighs over 20 pounds, and only one in 2,000 catches this kind of a trophy on a fly. You have to be a special kind of fly fisherman to hunt for, hook, and land one of these giants. We're fortunate to have Lonnie Waller as our guide on this hunt for trophy steelhead. For 18 years, Lonnie has pursued steelhead with a fly rod, and he's explored the Skeena system for 10 seasons. During those expeditions, he's taken 11 steelhead weighing over 20 pounds on a fly. He's truly qualified to help you on your way to becoming a master steelhead fisherman. Hi, I'm Lonnie Waller, and I am really excited about this trip. We'll be fishing in the best spot in the world to land a trophy steelhead. This is the ultimate test for a steelheader. But first, let's look at what you learned in the first two tapes. By now, you know steelhead. They're large rainbow trout that return from the ocean to the rivers to spawn. They have great energy reserves, and the spawning instinct has suppressed their appetites, so they are not in the rivers to feed. But they do take flies out of reflex or aggression. It becomes our task to elicit that strike mechanism to hook a steelhead. You've developed an understanding of how these fish behave. You've learned where steelhead like to rest or hold and why. This knowledge and the ability to read the water are the keys to finding steelhead. A trout stream may hold literally thousands of trout, but a really fine steelhead river may contain only a few hundred migrating steelhead on any given day. You've learned how water clarity and temperature affect the behavior of steelhead, influencing where the fish will hold and their activity level. This knowledge helps you determine where to look for steelhead and how to fish for them. You know from our previous tapes that the basis for everything is fishing with a plan. This is the only means to increase your probability of success. How you choose to present the fly is an important part of your plan. By now, you should be proficient with the downstream wet fly swing, a highly successful method of catching steelhead. You learn to fish it in a methodical way to show the fly to all the fish in a section of water. Cast, step down, and cast again. This approach alone has served many anglers well. I showed you what I call fishing the hang down to tantalize a steelhead into taking your fly at the end of the swing. You learn to adapt your line system to different water types and how to use more advanced presentations to get your fly to the fish. I showed you that steelhead will take a fly on the surface with presentations like the grease line method where you swim the fly broadside just under the surface. Another presentation that provided some exciting topwater action was the waking fly. I also showed you how to tie a riffle hitch and how to use a slider to fish two flies on one leader. I landed some great fish with these techniques, but not nearly as big as the steelhead I'm going after now. Remember, no matter how big or rare they are, trophy steelhead are still steelhead. We know them and their characteristics. It's those characteristics that make them vulnerable to our techniques and strategies. This final tape of the series will help you focus your abilities as you watch me attempt the ultimate and most exciting test in all steelhead fishing. The Skeena River system in northern British Columbia 
drains thousands of square miles before it empties into the Pacific Ocean near Prince Rupert. This river system is comprised of several of the world's most famous steelhead streams. Those known for their giant steelhead include the Kispiox, the Sustet, and the Babeen. Adult steelhead on these rivers average over 14 pounds. Why are they so much larger than fish from other rivers? It's been suggested that this is a genetically superior race of steelhead, and that may indeed be the case. Their great size may be a genetic adaptation to this special remote environment. They begin their lives like other seagoing rainbows, but unlike other steelhead, some of these juveniles stay in the river for up to four years before they migrate to salt water. Perhaps because they stay in the river longer, they're larger when they reach the ocean and able to feed on larger food. This could help them to grow huge in a shorter period of time. Like steelhead from other rivers, most of the steelhead from the Skeena only stay in the ocean for about two years before they return to spawn. But some of the larger fish do spend an additional year at sea. There are biologists who link the giant size of the fish to the length and difficulty of the return migration. Their theory is that only the largest and strongest have the energy to survive and spawn, and they produce big, strong offspring. Some people think it could have something to do with the quality and mineral content of the water itself. Well, no one's really sure. The large size of the Skeena steelhead may always remain a mystery. It's September, and the late summer run is in full swing. This is the Lower Babeen, a remote wilderness section of river rarely visited by anglers. We are approximately 25 miles above the point where the Babeen meets the Skeena. Some friends of mine and I were among the first we know of to fish these waters, and we have names for a lot of the runs. There's Triple Header, where I've landed two fish just under 30 pounds. Eagle Run, where you fish under the shadow of bald eagles that roost nearby. Dead Tree Run, where a friend of mine hooked 12 steelhead on a fly in just over two hours. He landed only four. There's Grizzly, Wolverine, Dave's Drift, Trotter's Rock, and many more. All beautiful water, some of the best there is for steelhead. The steelhead up here are the biggest in the world. So you want the finest, high quality equipment you can afford, and you want it in the best possible working order. Inferior or poorly maintained tackle may cost you a trophy fish not to mention all the time and the expense it took to hook him. I'm sticking with the graphite two rod. This one handles a 10 weight line and is nine and a half feet long. It has the power to push a heavy line and the big fly, plus all the strength I'll need to land a trophy. I'm using system two reels. They're the highest quality you can get for the money and they have a smooth, reliable drag. They're sized right to hold a lot of backing and built to take punishment. I have a full assortment of fly lines, floating lines, wet tips, and several densities of shooting tapers. The leaders I use on other rivers have eight to 10 pound tippets. Up here, I'm using 15 pound test. My leaders will vary from three to 14 feet in length to handle different water conditions and presentation styles. Now, just to give you an idea of the size of the fish we're going after, take a look at these flies. This is an ordinary size four steelhead fly. Now look at the size of the fly I'll be using here. You could catch a whale with this, and that's what we're after. In my experience, large fish prefer a large fly, so I'll be using flies tied on hooks from size two to one aught. They are barbless, and I've already made sure the points are sharp. I have an assortment of patterns for different water and light conditions. Bright patterns for cloudy or colored water. Dull patterns for bright conditions, clear water, 
and spooky fish, and dark patterns for conditions where I want a highly visible silhouette. I selected my vest to handle the larger gear and I organize my flies and leader material right up front where I can get to them fast. Water temperature tells me a lot about steelhead activity and how to fish for them. So I don't want to forget this. I'll need this tape to measure the length and girth of the fish. It's an accurate way to determine their weight and still release them. And I've got my camera. I'd like a picture if I land a trophy. Now let's go get some fish. Before I head out, I check with people who have recently fished the river. Just because the steelhead were plentiful in a run last year doesn't mean a thing this year. River conditions change, and so do the places that hold steelhead. This is Eagle Run. We named it because there's a family of bald eagles that roost nearby. It's something to think that they once lived like this all over America. I'm here to catch big fish, so I'm going to fish like a hunter. Here's my strategy. First, I'll read the water and then choose a line system and a presentation that will cover all the water effectively. Eagle Run is classic water, a perfect place for steelhead. It starts downstream here with a long set of rapids. The steelhead have to come up through those, so they'll want to rest in the calmer water above. At the top of Eagle Run is another set of rapids, another reason why steelhead will rest here until they're ready to continue working their way upstream. This is what the water looks like. There's a heavy current that comes in at the top of the run. It's too fast to be a comfortable resting lie, but here in the center is a secondary current seam of slower water. Steelhead like to lie right where these two currents meet. It's got a moderate current speed and good depth, around four feet. About two thirds of the way down the run, there's a big rock that they like to lie around. It breaks up the flow and gives them more protection from the current. We have water temperature right around 50 degrees. That means the steelhead will be active and aggressive. I've got two currents to deal with here, the fast primary current and the slow secondary. That means I'm going to need to mend a lot to control the speed of my fly. How would you fish Eagle Run? I'll be using the downstream swing with a wet tip line for good depth and good mending control. A short leader to keep my fly down in the current and a number two green butted skunk for big fish. Ordinarily, on a run this big, I might fish two passes to hit all the water. But here, I know exactly where the steelhead should be lying, so I'll fish only one pass. But I'll pay special attention to that rock. I'll cover the front, both sides, and behind it with several casts. Now, I've already covered the water upstream from my position by making a series of short casts that put my fly through that seam. But now I'm coming to the most productive part of the run. Now, you remember the good old downstream swing? Well, in this case, I'm going to make my presentation down and across with a reach cast that'll get my line straight, avoid that belly, I'll mend, follow as the line and the fly go swinging downstream. Now, as the fly and the line go into the hang down position, I'll tease the fly, manipulate it so that we might coax a strike out of a steelhead that's either resting there or that's followed the fly around on its swing. All right, no strike. So we're gonna take one step downstream, get around the rocks, and I'm gonna make that same presentation again. Down and across with a reach, get, that line, get the line straight, Mend when you have to, follow with your rod tip as your line goes swinging down through the seam. Now this is a great way to fish because each time you step down and each time you make a new cast, you have a new opportunity to take a 20 pound steelhead. So it's a great way to fish when you're working down a big river like this. You can cover a lot of water in a day with not a lot of effort. All right, let's take one more step downstream. Make that same presentation again. 
across and down, put your reach in, follow with your rod tip, mend when you start to belly your line, follow with your rod until you come to your hang down position. Now there's two ways that a big fish will hit you. The first way is that your line will just stop and then there will be a series of deep throbs or pulsing motions. That's a sign that a big fish has grabbed your fly and he's shaking his big head trying to figure out what's wrong. The second way they'll do it is your fly will just stop and the next thing you know, your line is screaming down river as fast as it can go. That's your signal to get out of the water and onto the bank so that you can follow that fish downstream. This time of the year with the weather good like this, it's really nice. This is comfortable warm weather steelheading and that's real nice when you can have it like that. It's a fish. All right. This could be the one I'm looking for. I don't know. It's hard to tell on these bigger fish, but he's bucking good. Now they'll stay deep a lot of times and hooking them on the downstream part of your cast like that is really difficult because you don't have a lot of line speed in the water to help you set the hook, but I socked it to him pretty good. I thought I was hung on the bottom. Now they'll do this a lot too. It, they don't think they're in trouble for, for a while. I got it in him good. I think it's a male. He's fighting like one. Now usually they kick up more of a fuss than this, so I'm gonna be real careful in case he decides he's real, he's hooked. I don't think he knows he's hooked yet. Or he may have just come up through that fast water blow and he may be tired. Now there he's acting like a steelhead. Make sure you got your drag set loose enough to give him the running he needs. You don't want a backlash and you don't want it too tight. He's got the old green butted skunk on here. A strong leader, he's gonna come up. Nope, fighting deep. Now, just keep him balanced and off guard. You gotta keep rocking your rod around. Never fight them from the same rod position because they can adjust to that. Now he's doing the old Stevie twist. There's a little run. Each one of them is different. They don't all head for the moon. This one's do, doing the old buck and twist. So you keep it on them, keep steady pressure on them. You gotta beat these fish. You don't yamp baby them. And so I'm gonna see if I can slide this guy out here. Now what's happening to him? Kind of right in the nose, it looks like. About a 12 or 14 pound buck. Okay, look at the color. These skein of fish are beautiful. There's, there's a, a little bit of action. The males get colored up like this. They get those real pink gill plates and a stripe down their sides. And the males up here are the ones that get big. They get, those are the 20 plus pound fish. It's always the bucks and it's always, always the, the males who get up 25 plus pounds. The females, on the other hand, are bright, more chrome-plated fish. I see how strong they are. Boy, that guy, this doesn't want to quit, but if you stay with them like this, keep them off balance, make him work. All right, now, got a good place to land him. See what we got here. I think he's gonna be mine in just a few minutes. He's a beautiful, specimen not real big it's about average but it's a heck of a way to start off the trip up here i'll tell you i'm not complaining now some of them will really jump even the males will jump up here i've had them come out of the water three four feet see i'm get that rod down low that exerts the maximum pressure you can on a fish because it turns them to the side when you see him go one way you get him going and then turn him it confuses them, and it's supposed to wear them out. <laughs> Keep gaining line when you can. <sighs> well, this guy wasn't a screamer, and he wasn't a jumper, but the first fish on the bad bean, and I'll take him if I can get him. Now, your drag setting is normally not a constant thing. It depends on how much line you've got on the fish. I keep it looser on a long line, because they exert more pressure on you than they do on a short line. Now I'm gonna crank it down a little bit because I about got this guy. I'm gonna try and get him out now. Oh, he's pretty. What a pretty fish. This 
to me, is what a rainbow trout is supposed to look like. Now, here's a tricky moment. They'll sometimes run between your legs, so keep your <laughs> knees together. It's a good way to lose them up close. Now I got them. The males like this are just beautifully colored. They'll have that red down their side. Oh, this is a good guy. I want to measure this guy, get my eyes set. Come here now. These baboon fish are tricky in close. They put up most, a lot of their fight right in close, but we got this guy. I'm going to measure him, get this tape out. I think he's 14, 14, 15 maybe. Let's see. Just I'll just take the length on this guy. These fish get real girthy up here, but let's see what this guy's going to be. Well, 36. Yeah, he's easy, 14, maybe 15. Now, I hate, let's see, where am I going to put this rod? Let's do this. Put this guy facing up into the current. Just about there. Let him go. Get, make sure they're breathing properly when you let them go. These fish are so thick through the back here, too. They, that's the reason they get the size up here they do. OK, guy, he's fine. He'll make it. Well, that's, we're off to a good start. We're on the right river at the right time. It's a good omen for the rest of the trip and a whole lot of fun. That kind of action is what steelheading is all about. Let's take a break while I move on to some new water. You might look through your guidebook. It has more detailed information about these magnificent fish. We spotted a wolverine along the bank the first time we ever fished this water. It's a long, riffly run, water about three and a half to four feet deep, with lots of pockets and depressions for fish to rest. They come into wolverine from the heavy rapids below. So steelhead will be looking for places to rest out of the main current. Along the opposite bank, the current is heavy. On this side, it slacks off. That's where the fish are, in the seam just this side of the heavy current. They will rest all the way down the seam, and that's where we'll look for them. I'll start at the top, what I call the eye of the run, or the riffle, and I'll work that current seam where the shallow riffle water meets the current of the main river, and I'll fish downstream for a distance of about, oh, 40 or 50 yards. That's the bucket in this spot. I want to get my fly deep, but not snag the bottom in the shallow water. So I'm using a floating line with a 12-foot leader and a weighted silver Hilton fly. With an upstream cast, the longer leader will allow my fly to sink and drift near the bottom with the natural flow of the current. I hope the drag-free drift of the fly will elicit the strike response in the steelhead. Now let me show you how I fish the upstream presentation with a floating line and a heavily weighted fly. It's a great way to fish because you can cover so much water all in one cast. Now I make my first presentation well upstream and across. I allow the line to settle on the water. Now I take in the slack as the current brings the line down towards my position. I also like a high rod position to keep the belly out of the water. Now the slack comes tight, I go into my downstream swing, follow with my rod tip as the fly moves down below me. Then I go into the hang down, give the fly a couple of twitches or pulls. We're gonna tease a fish into striking if we can. And that's basically it. Let me show you one more time. It's easy and it's very, very effective. You make that cast up and across stream, take the slack in as the current brings the line back toward you, follow with your rod tip, then as the line comes tight, go into your downstream swing, follow with your rod tip, mend if you have to to keep that fly moving as deeply as possible, go on through with your swing, and fish into your hang down then. Give it a couple of tugs, twitches. Now for some people it's easy to remember this presentation if they think of the fish as being the primary target and the presentation as the secondary target. 
Now, if I don't get a strike on one or two casts, I'll take a step downstream, all right, make that same presentation again, and continue fishing and working my way downriver. Now, I've been thinking about what I'll do if I hook really a big fish here. This is really not a good place for me because there's a real heavy set of rapids downstream that I can't wade through, and there's a cliff, so I can't go around. What I'll have to do is go to the bank, get below the fish, and try and force him into fighting his way back upstream into the main run. A friend of mine lost really a big fish here last year, about a 25-pounder, and I don't want that to happen to me today. Fish on! All right, oh, beautiful jump, and he's going down. All right, baby, you took that silver Hilton just on the turn, didn't you? Yes, that was a good guy. All right. Boy, boy, when they sock it like that, I love it. This floating line like this, it's a slow, easy drift, and you never know when they're going to hit you. This guy took it just as the line straightened out on the turn and started to come around. I fed a little bit of slack, and boy, he climbed on. He gets in that rift down below, and I'm, I may lose him. And there's no, nowhere I can go, so I'm going to keep steady pressure, lift with the rod, get the line up, and then wind down, and just keep walking him up. Now he's sulking a little bit. I'm going to lift him a little bit more. All right. Now I've got him back up closer. Walked him right back up the riffle. Easy pressure, and he came right along. Now I'm going to try and gain some line on him and put a little bit of pressure on him, get the rod down low, rock him from side to side, get him off balance, and keep him that way so he doesn't know which way the pressure's coming from, and we can tire him out a lot quicker that way. OK, I think we've got him now. Now I think we've got this guy. Got a long leader on here and this floating line, so I got to get it right up to the Oh, no, no, no. He's not done yet. You have to be ready for that. They'll, they'll do that right in front of you sometimes, just like this guy is. Oh, come on now. There we got it. All right, now I'm going to get in a little bit shallower water here, try to keep him walking around. OK, baby, now I've got you. The old Silver Hilton, look at where it is. Perfect. Perfect. Not a giant fish, but he's a beauty. Come on now. Not, OK, around the head if you want to go that way. Now, come on. All right, now I'm going to see if I can put it to him now. i got a pretty strong leader on here. I'm going to kind of waltz him in if I can. <laughs> no, he's not ready yet. But come on now. There you go. A little bit of that line back. You have to be ready for that. When they come in shallow, there's usually a grand finale where they really kick up a lot. Now I think I'm going to get him now. No, I'm not either. Oh. Come on now. You've kicked up enough rockets for one day. Just come on in and see. Well, OK. All right. A little bit smaller than average for the babine. And it looks like we've got a female here. Oh, she's pretty, though. She is pretty. Heartwarming steelhead, a friend of mine calls them. And they are that, for sure. A little mark on her back. It may be a net mark or a line cut. I don't know. She took the silver hilt and the floating line, just like a dream. OK, I'm going to let you go, darling. Get my hand up there. You want to support them with your hand. Don't, don't hurt them. Just give them some support. There's the fly. Goes right out without the barb. Now, uh oh, okay, baby, there you go. Come on now. Bye, bye, darling. About I'd say eight, maybe nine pounds. A nice fish. That fish put up a good fight, but I put up a better one. Big fish don't come easy, so let's try some new water. Meanwhile, you should check with your guidebook. It can help you see some things in the tape you might have missed the first time through. With only a few days to fish, Lonnie's time is at a premium. He's been here before, so his strategy is to fish only water where he knows that big fish have been caught. At each location, he reads the water. Then he plans his approach around his knowledge of the water conditions, conditions that affect where the steelhead will lie and the level of their activity. After several days of warm weather, it turned cold and was overcast for two days. The water temperature dropped to 46 degrees. At a pool called Beaver Pond, 
Lonnie knew the fish would be holding deep and would be less active in the cooler water. So he used a shooting taper and a weighted fly to go after them. And he hooked a big fish. All right, I'm gonna see what he's gonna do now. I'm gonna get the line tight on him. He's shaking and bucking like a pretty good one, but you can't tell. I, I got so much line in the water that I can't really tell yet. I don't know. I'm gonna stay on him, give him the heat as much as I can. Oh, he's pulling like a good one. He could be our fish. See that rod, those deep throbs like, oh, man. Oh, no. Uh, well, I don't know what to say about that. It happens, but I sure don't like it. <laughs> oh, brother. Let's see, what did he do to me? That hook just pulled out. Well, there's one more in there. Let's get him. At triple header, conditions were different. So Lonnie changed the system. In the slower, shallower water, he chose a wet tip line. But he stayed with a weighted fly and the downstream swing. And he hooked another skein of steelhead. This one wasn't the trophy he was looking for, so on to the next run. Now here's some different water just upstream from our lodge. This is where a friend caught his first steelhead on a fly. So we named the place after him, Dave's Drift. A 21 pounder was taken here three days ago. It's a long, deep run with depths of four to eight feet and good current speed throughout. A primary fast current comes in from above and the secondary current, which is a little slower, comes from the riffle entering to one side. You'll find steelhead where the two currents meet. They hold deep there in the scene before moving upstream. Above, there's a glacial tributary that feeds into this run, cooling the water and sometimes clouding it a little. So the steelhead will be holding deep. Now that you know the conditions, how would you fish Dave's Drift? I'm going to use my deep water system to get the fly right down near the bottom. A high speed, high D shooting taper will reach the bottom in this current and I might weight the short leader with a couple of twist ons. I'll use this big number one aught boss fly with bead chain eyes for added weight. It's a dark pattern that will make a more visible silhouette in the deep water. Actually, there's good water all the way at the top of the run. Just inside that heavy main current, there's a slower secondary current where the fish like to lie. But my favorite spot is right here where that secondary riffle comes in to join the main river. There's a scene there that the fish will rest in all the way down for the next 40 yards or so. It's great resting water for steelhead. Now I know from past experience just about where the fish will be lying. They'll be resting in that seam directly below me, that spot where the heavy current meets the slower water on the inside, a narrow slot about four feet wide. So I'm gonna present my fly by casting across, slightly downstream into the heavy water, giving a flip man to straighten the line you, because you don't want a belly for this presentation. Now I'm gonna feed out the slack Follow with my rod tip until that fly is sunken very deep and I'm gonna pinch it off and follow it as the fly rides right through that seam. Now casting this system is a little tricky because these shooting tapers are heavy and you'll wanna open your loop up a little bit and slow down your casting cycle some. Now let's do it again. I'm gonna cast out into that heavy water, make a flip mend to get the line straight. Now I'm gonna feed the slack out which allows the fly to ride right down through that seam. When I think it's deep enough, I pinch it off, follow with my rod tip as it swings right along the bottom, right in front of their noses. Okay, now if I hook one here, it's a good place for me because I can follow downstream. And sometimes on this river, you have to do that. All right, no steelhead. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one step downstream, get over that big rock there, I'll make that same presentation again. Out into that heavy water, give that flip man to get it straight, feed the slack down, letting the fly sink real deep, pinching it off, 
and then follow as the fly swings right through that seam. All right, I'll give a little twitch there in the hang down. Tease them if you have to. Okay, I fished all the way down from the top and I'm fishing deep here, so I've lost a few flies. And you have to expect to do that when you fish deep, heavy water like this, and a lot of rocks on the bottom. But now I'm coming down to the spot where I really think is the best. From past experience, we've hooked most of our fish right here where this riffle comes in from the side and meets the main current. They'll lay right out there where that heavy water meets that slower water. And that's right where I want my fly. If I don't get one, I'm gonna go back up to the top and start again because this is really a good run. This has always produced a fish. There, fish on! All right, oh, it's a good fish! Woo-hoo-hoo! The old shooting tug of that guy go. Get him on the reel now. All right, boy, that deep sunken fly went right down the seam just where we figured he'd be and he climbed on. Oh, look at that jump! Jeez, he came four feet out of the air. There's another one, that's two. All right, oh, what a beautiful fish we got here now. Come on, baby, do it for me one more time, and there he is, all right. Come on, you got another one in you, I know that. I'm gonna watch my footing here. Boy, he's hammered onto that old boss, right out on the seam, that fly was just rolling right above bottom. All right, here he goes again, breaking up. The He's breaking the river up. All right. Boy, this is a pretty fish, too, really clean. Looks real bright, and I bet she's got the boss right in his lips. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna get out a little bit here where I don't lose my balance. This fish is strong, boy. Boy, that deep sunken fly is slow, and you gotta believe in it, but they're there. Oh, what a beauty. What a beauty this guy is. A real jumper, too. He's gonna come again. Oh, come on, come on now. Now he's got this running line back out on me again. I'm gonna have to move down a little bit. Come on, baby. Come on, oh, this is a good fish. Nice fish. Okay, now, let me see, where am I here? I'm gonna get around this stuff a little bit. Maybe get out of this fast water and walk him down a little bit. So I got a little bit better footing. All right, Dave's Drift, give up this steelhead right now. Come on in, I'm gonna rock it in. Oh, what a good fish. All right, little, I mean, they usually go a little crazy when they get in like this. Maybe they, <laughs> they're tough when they're in tight like this, boy, you gotta really give them line if you have to. This is where it can really get tricky. You can lose a good fish here. They run between your legs or break off on the rock, so they're tough. See, they've got a lot of stamina, the rock it. All right. Oh boy, nice girth on this fish. <laughs> Gonna get down on my knees a little bit here. Maybe I can scoot it in. Oh, what a pretty fish. Come on now. <sighs> See, without a net, <laughs> without a net, they're a little tricky, but I don't, I don't like to use a net. I think this is a lot of fun to get them in your hand and tail them. It takes a little longer, because, but it's sure a lot more fun. Oh, I got strong leader on here, so we're all right, and I got her hooked right. Come on. Boy, I gotta get back up, I guess. Now we got her going, I think. Come on, baby cakes. Oh, what a beaut, what a beaut. Nope, not yet. <laughs> Come on now. Get out of there. Back up here, I'm gonna let you go. Get back up here. Come on, one more time. Now, come on now. Oh boy, look at this steel head. Look at this steel head. What a fat beauty. What a beauty. Wanna go back up that way, honey? Let me give you a drink. Oh, she's a good 15, maybe 16 pounds. She's really got the girth. Really beautiful, not a mark on her. Typical example of a prime babine hen. Bye, baby. Woo-wee!
The first time we fished here, years ago, a Canadian honker adopted us for the day. It was good water then. Let's see what it can do now. Goose is the bottom end of a long run. The water above is deep, and below there's a long section of rough, heavy water. This whole tailout is good resting water with rocks and depressions throughout. The fish will lie almost anywhere from the lower portion of the run down to the lip of the riffle below. The best water starts here, and you have 50 yards of good water to fish. As you can see, it's a smooth, even flow, and it's shallow, only three to five feet deep. The water temperature is up a little, right at 50 degrees. Okay, how shall we fish goose? I think this is an ideal opportunity to try for a steelhead on the surface. I'll add an eight pound test tippet because I'll be using a waller waker which is tied on a light wire hook. Even though it's tied with materials to keep it on the surface, I still dress the fly before using it. Now you fish the waking fly almost like a downstream wet fly, only the fly is on the surface so you can see everything. Now the key is to let the fly wake and make a V as it moves across the stream and downstream from you. So sometimes you have to lead a little bit with your rod tip to keep that tension. Sometimes you may have to drop your rod if the current's a little faster. Remember, the key is to keep a steady pressure on the fly because that's what makes it wake and that's what stirs up the steelhead. Now let me show you that one more time. We'll make our cast out and slightly downstream. Let the fly land on the water. Put a little bit of belly in your line there. That sometimes is a good thing to, wait, to speed the fly up a little bit. Now you follow with your rod. So kind of what you're doing here is you're using your rod and your belly and the line to make that fly wake as she moves across stream. That steady V is what you're looking for. Now, if you don't get a strike, you can pick your fly up, make that same drift, ag same drift again, or you can take a step downstream and make a new cast. Remember, each time you step down and you're fishing a new cast, it's a whole new ball game and you may have a fresh fish just waiting to climb on that fly. So now I'm gonna follow with my rod tip, lead a little bit, that keeps that fly moving. Remember, the key is to keep the right amount of tension on the fly to make it wake and there's a big fish just boiled and we may have a chance to get that guy up. All right, there he rolled again. Let's see, I'm gonna lengthen my line a little bit here. That fish is a little bit further out, but let's see if I can reach him here now. Sometimes when they show themselves like that, you can actually hook them. All right, now the fly's waking, it's coming across. I'm gonna ease off, give it a little slack to keep it from going too fast. All right, it's coming around. All right, no steelhead. So I'm gonna take a step downstream now and get a little bit closer to him. Let's give it to him one more time. You can coax them up. Remember, they're not here feeding on insects. What we're trying to do is to coax that fish into taking our fly. So we give it several presentations. Now I'm gonna make that fly. Now it's V. There it's waking, coming across, swinging just right. Now I'm gonna pull, give it a little twitch there. Okay, no grab. Well, now I'm gonna follow it around. Let it get out of that fish's zone. Now I'm gonna pick it up. I'm gonna strip out just a little bit of line and give it to him one more time. That same cast, quartering downstream, keep the tension on the fly, let it make that V, and just follow in as it swings around. Now it's waking just right. I got the tension on the fly, it's coming around, coming around. Oh, oh he boiled on it. He boiled, he didn't take it though. He didn't take it, he just came up and rolled. Oh, oh he he. Let's give it one more shot. Same cast. Out and down. Get the fly starting to swing by pulling back my rod a little bit here. Now it's Ving. Now I'm gonna slack off a little bit to keep that tension at the right rate of speed. He's coming around. Boy, he took it! All right, right on the water waker. All right, let's see what he's gonna do. What a grab. Right, come up just like a trout and hit that thing. Gulped it right in. I think he's got it right in his lips. Okay, now well, let's see what he's gonna do. I got a good bottom here. And, oh, there's a beautiful jump. Look at that guy come out, a cromer. 
Okay, now we got the drag. Well, check your drag. Keep your drag set tight. Not too much pressure. I got a light dry fly tippet on here now, so you can't hog a fish on a dry fly tippet like you can on a heavy wet fly. Maybe get another jump out of this guy. Go oh, look at him bucking. He's heading down. Come on, baby. Come on. I better get a little bit better footing here. Wait and see what he's going to do. He's going to move down. I'm going to follow him a little bit. Stack that line on the reel in case he runs again. You don't want a backlash. And you can't do much with your fish by rocking your rod when he's this far away from you. So I'm just going to keep steady, constant pressure on him. You see if I can turn him and talk him into coming back up here. I got a good bottom, a long way to fight the fish. I got the rod locked underneath my forearm. Oh, look at that guy tear up the top. Look at that. That's two beautiful jumps. Watch where you're walking. Check that drag. There he goes. All right. Now I'm going to get a little bit of that back. You can tell. Uh-oh, now he's running right at me. I'm going to strip in the line because I can't keep up with him on the reel. Now he's going to jump. He's coming up, coming up, coming up. All right. Keep him on the reel. Strip when they run at you like that, and then let him have it back again. You got to handle your slack with your other hand, and don't let it get wrapped around the reel handle. But there, oh, there's a beautiful jump. Look at that guy right in the tail out. He, now, that fish saw that fly three times before he took it. Most of the time, if they feel the hook, they won't come back. But this guy just rolled on it, didn't feel it, and we gave it to him again, and he took it. Now, he, he's kind of taking it easy on me now. What's he doing? OK, there he go. Now he Oh, look at that fish. That fish is 15 pounds if he's three ounces. This guy is, I think, is 15. He may be a little bit more. It depends on his girth. He looks like he's got the length for 15 pounds. And if he's got the girth, we got a great catch on a dry fly. I'll tell you, that's about as good as it'll get. He's still fresh, though. He's going to go. I don't have him yet. Keep your rod down low. Sweep him from side to side. Keep him off balance. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. Oh, look at that. Oh, you never know how well they're hooked. Oh, man. And you never know if he's chafing your leader. The current's kind of fast here. I'm going to try and walk him. There, we got him walking now. Come on, baby. Come on, tighten that drag up a little bit. I'm ready to give line if I have to. You pump him in, and then reel as you, as you lower your rod back to the fish. Just walk him right into you. I don't know. Can't see it yet. OK, babe. Now let's see what we got. Oh, boy, look at that steelhead. Let's see what we got. We don't have it yet. I'm going to try and swing it around above me. Oh, yes, sir. That's, that, that's 15. Easy. Nope, not between my legs, you don't. All right, now there's a fish on a dry fly right there. Look at that guy. Looks like, well, I don't know. Might be a girl fish. Can't tell. I, I don't know. I'll give her a drink or him a drink, as the case may be. I got the barb down. Should slide right out. Let me look at you one more time. You're, I think, the prettiest thing I've seen all day today. Boy, and on, right on the surface, boiled with a fly, and then you took it, didn't you? All right, sweetheart, I'm going to try and just take this right out of you. Should just fall right out of there, just like that. Now, how about a nice, pretty release? Nothing too violent, because everything's fine. You're going to go back in, give you a drink. OK, kid, there you go. Head you right into the river. Get a big drink, move you back and forth a little bit. There you go. <laughs> All right. She's ready. <laughs> Woo. Early morning on the Babine. It's magic here. There's not a man-made sound to be heard. This has been a wonderful trip, and the fishing's been spectacular. But for Lonnie, there's still one more fish to be caught. His goal is to land a steelhead that weighs over 20 pounds. Jeff's Rock is a run about 100 yards long with lots of good resting water for steelhead. Under most conditions, it fishes well with a wet tip line and the downstream swing. In the upper end of Jeff's Rock, Lonnie hooked an active 16-pound female.
At the lower end of Jeff's Rock, the water deepens. Near the middle of the river, a large boulder breaks the current, making a seam that is ideal for holding big fish. Lonnie works his way carefully down through the run, mending to slow the fly and help keep it deep. When the fly swings into the seam below the boulder, it stops and he sets the hook. Big fish, I think. I think this is a big one. Yeah, this is a hog. Feels like a big fish. It hit like one and he feels real strong and steady in the current, like a big log that's going sideways. It feels good, it feels good. Now in a situation like this, 90% of the battle is keeping your attention on the fish, trying to stay calm, give line when you have to, and fight them every inch of the way. I got a lot of heavy stuff below me. If he runs down, I can't follow him. He's holding the wash behind that boulder, just resting up. It feels big. <clears throat> See how he's fighting? There's not a lot of thrashing, not a lot of jumping around, just a big, deep, steady fight. And that's the way the bigger fish are, especially the big bucks. See the rod? It's just holding steady, like I've snagged bottom. But that is not bottom. <laughs> that is a steelhead. I think of pretty decent proportion. I don't know what I can do. I'm just gonna try and keep the pressure on him until he shows himself. I wanna find out for sure how big he is before I get really excited, but I think it's a good fish. See that, see that deep, steady buck of the rod like that? That's usually the sign of a big fish. It's that steady, oh, he's going. Now put the pressure on him. What makes me think he's big now is the way he's fighting me. So let's see, I'm gonna try and keep all the pressure on. I've got a one-aught boss on here, a short leader, tapered down to 15 pound test. So it should hold in the rocks and chafing on the side of the fish. See that real steady, deep throb? That's usually the sign of a big male. Now you can fight these fish sometimes for an hour with these really big guys. I don't know what we've got here yet. But he's, I can feel his head shakes and he's big. He's big. Oh yeah, he's a good one. He may not be a world record, but he feels real strong. See how, he just won't come up. I think it's a big male. Now fighting a big fish like this is really tricky. There's a lot of luck involved. If you hook him in the wrong pool, you may never land him. The hook can pull out. A lot of things can happen. I may not get this fish, but I'm gonna fight him as well as I can, keep the pressure on him from all positions, try and get him to work and tire out. But I, th I think we may have our trophy right here. <sighs> He's sure fighting like a hog. Keep the pressure on him as much as I can. Get that rod position rocking back and forth and just wear him down. It's just, just a heavyweight fight now. See, a big fish won't kill itself. It won't. It won't uh, exhaust itself by these, usually these big jumps and stuff. They'll fight you deep like this, and that conserves their energy. They, a female, say 12, 14 pounds or so, she'll almost beat herself because she jumps so much on the surface. But a bigger fish will stay deep, and you've got to pump them and work them. It's almost, almost like saltwater fishing in a way. You got a big fish, and you got to work them and put the heat on them. I, all right. Now I think I've just about got him. I'm gonna try and get him in right in here in this slot. I got a slot of slower water right here. I can't see yet just how big this guy is, but he may go 20. He may go 20. I got a lot of glare in front of me. I really can't see into the water yet. A nice size head on him. He may make it if he's got the girth. He's not done yet. Come on, darling, get over here. Now, I don't want him swimming between my legs, so I'm gonna get my feet together. I can see that boss right in the corner of his mouth. I'm gonna walk him in right here now if I can. It's a little bit of fast current. Okay, come on now. Get down to him. Oh, he's 20. I think we got a 20-pounder right here. <laughs> if I can get him by No way, no way, man, he is not ready. Oh boy, 
See, without a net, you have to take those kind of chances. I'm going to put the muscle to him right now. And I can't see his girth, but I'm going to, or quite his length either. I'm going to try and measure him when I get him in. I can get him up on the rocks here. Come on now. Let's see. Come on now. Get back over here. He's pretty tired. Now, if I can get him skating like this, I'm going to try and walk him right out if I can get him. Don't want to break that rod either. OK. I got him. He's now ours. Oh, he's close to 20. He'll make 20, I think. Let's check. I'm going to put a tape on him, see what we've got. Now, let's check the length first. OK. 37 and a half, 37 and a half inches for length. OK, OK, now easy now. 37 and a half by 19 and a half. He'll go 20. Get him up, come on. OK, boy, <laughs> I love it. Look at this guy here. This is what I come up for. A trophy like this on the fly is a fish of a lifetime. These big skein of fish, see, they got this, they got the great girth on them, great size. And this fish is probably six, maybe seven years old. And the male, obviously, he's got that, give you another look, he's got that red down his side and the gill plate, the red on the gill plate, longer jaws. That's your buck. Okay, I'm gonna give him a drink. <laughs> gonna let you go now, fella. The old boss. I came a long way for you, and you did it. OK, in the river with you. In you go. Let him go now in a good place. He can breathe good right here. OK, you ready to release them? Here we go. Here we go. All right, big fella. Come on now. Come on. Oh, I, I'll take them. <laughs> Making this series of tapes was one of the great experiences of my life. This expedition to the legendary Babine River was the high point. I came after a trophy, and I got one by fishing with the plan and by using the techniques I showed you in the first two tapes. At Eagle Run, the fish were lying in the seam at the edge of the fast water. So I used a wet tip line with a short leader and the downstream swing to catch this beautiful buck. Wolverine also gave us some action. This time, it was the upstream presentation with a floating line and a long leader that gave the fly a drag-free drift. Dave's drift had some deep water lies. That's where I used a shooting taper and the feed and pinch technique to go deep. The conditions were right, and the tail out at Goose produced some spectacular surface action on a waking fly. The lower end of Jeff's rock was where I finally got my 20-pounder on the downstream swing, a wet tip line, and a big boss fly. What an amazing experience. All of the techniques we covered in this series came together in this tape. I hope you're taking advantage of the guidebook to get as much out of this series as you can. Tape one gives you the opportunity to build a foundation of knowledge about steelhead. There, I put a premium on the systematic approach to fishing for them using the downstream swing and the cast, step, cast method of covering the water. The second tape presents more advanced techniques, building on your knowledge of steelhead and how they behave in the river. Finally, we had the experience of a lifetime, fishing for and landing some trophy steelhead on the Skeena River system of British Columbia. And if you want another approach, a unique method for catching steelhead and salmon on flies, I recommend Jim Teeny's tapes. He's a hunter who spots his fish before he casts. What you have now in these tapes and guidebooks is a complete mastery series on fishing for steelhead in the classic tradition. With this knowledge, you will be able to find and catch steelhead anywhere.
Thanks for being with me. I wish all of you the best. We hope you've learned from these tapes that to be a master steelhead fisherman, you'll need drive, dedication, and passion. These are rare, beautiful fish, and catching them on flies is a privilege reserved for true sportsmen like you. Excitement you're after. Come fishing with the experts from 3M Scientific Anglers and learn ways to catch more and bigger trout on the fly. You'll learn where to find trout in a stream and ways to present the right fly with the perfect cast so you can catch the most elusive trout during hatch and non-hatch situations. Plus, they're steelheading for 20-pound rainbows or going for the ultimate saltwater challenge. Let 3M Scientific Anglers bring home the excitement while you learn a lifetime of mastery techniques that will help you become the best fly fisherman you can be. There's no other sport like fly fishing. It can truly give you a lifetime of discovery and enjoyment. Whether you fish your own favorite stream, or travel the world with your fly rod, there's no end to what you'll learn. To help speed you along your path of discovery, Scientific Anglers from 3M has recruited some of the world's best fly fishermen to produce a complete learning system of videotape programs. Unlike simple how-to videos, the Scientific Anglers Mastery Series shows you more than just tips. It gives you an easy-to-learn formula for success to truly help you become a master angler. There are programs designed to give you a strong foundation of knowledge and skills. At the next level, the mastery system helps you integrate the skills and knowledge into sophisticated fly fishing strategies. And for the expert, there are challenge level programs that offer original and innovative techniques to help you master the most difficult fly fishing situation. Think of it as a learning path towards fly fishing mastery. The tape you just viewed is part of that path. In Doug Swisher's Trout Series, Scientific Anglers presents a four-part program that features a natural learning progression. First, there's basic fly casting, where you learn loop control and the principles of throwing a perfect straight line cast. Then you move on to advanced fly casting, building your skills with more complex casting techniques, including curve and reach cast. Now you're ready for action as Strategies for Selective Trout shows you how to fish a hatch from bottom to top. And you'll almost feel the strike as Doug demonstrates ways to take difficult trout in non-hatch conditions. Finally, in Advanced Strategies for Selective Trout, Doug teaches you his most sophisticated methods including ways to successfully fish the midge, how to unlock the mysteries of masking hatches and special streamer tactics to catch big trout. You'll be part of the action as you look through the eyes of the expert and learn the real whys behind the mastery of fly fishing for trout. While you're improving your streamside skills, you may also want to learn to tie your own flies. Gary Borger shows you a step-by-step -step approach to the basics of fly tying and Doug Swisher demonstrates how to tie flies to match the hatch and his deadly attractor patterns. If you're hooked on catching the big ones, you've got to see the four-part series on fly fishing for Pacific Steelhead. Lonnie Waller and Jim Teeny will provide you with a complete arsenal of skills so that you can take these giant rainbows even in the most challenging conditions. 
But that's not all. Scientific Anglers takes you south to watch world record holder Billy Pate demonstrate his secrets of success for hooking up and landing the ultimate fly fishing game. And if you love fishing, hunting, and other sports, think of 3M as your total video resource for outdoor adventure. Explosive action, in-depth information, incredible scenes. 3M Sportsman's Video Collection brings you the world of bass fishing with America's top anglers like Doug Hannon, Ricky Klein, and Al Linder, a comprehensive learning series that'll make you the best bass angler on your lake. You'll be glad you watch these programs when you catch the bass of a lifetime. The gentle beauty of a deep forest glade. The heart-pounding excitement of a trophy buck in rut. Going one-on-one -on -one with North America's most popular big game animal. That's what deer hunting's all about. And nobody brings you more in-depth information and true life action than the 3M Sportsman's Video Collection. The excitement of calling a bird into your gun. The satisfaction of making a clean shot. And the companionship of a well-trained dog. If you like the challenge of upland, game bird, and waterfowl hunting, 3M Sportsman's Video Collection gives you the thrill of being there. And the knowledge you need to master the sport. 